we're going to be shedding light on some of the um, programs and policies being undertaken um, at the Ghana High Commission. And um, once the High Commission and our guests are done, uh, we'll be taking questions, remarks, and suggestions from your very good selves. Um, the High Commissioner is going to do a welcoming, and then um, he will introduce our guest for today. Thank you so much for coming, uh, members of the media. I think this represents a cross-section of the Ghanaian media in the United Kingdom. I know that the Ghana High Commission has been having interaction with Ghanaians. I mean, I'll just say that even on Saturday, we'll be going to Manchester. We've been going around the country a lot. But it's also important that in our work, we try and engage the Ghanaian people generally so that we can get feedback. One of the major, major responsibilities of the Ghana High Commission is related to passports and visas. And on many occasions when people have decided to see me, they go to their passport and immigration section at Highgate, thinking that that's where the High Commission or the High Commissioner is based. This then tells us that for those we deal with, passports and visas is probably the most important, and including consular matters. Over the past few weeks, we've been having challenges with our passport and visas, and this has led to a lot of adverse, adverse publicity being given the mission through social media. And you know that just like a football match, you will play 99% and you make a mistake, you lose, we forget about everything. However, as a, a mission, we always try to improve on our services to the people. We've also come to learn that in every society, when you are introducing a new thing, however good, if you don't engage those who are to be the beneficiaries of that policy, it is received negatively. There have been so many instances in our country, in Ghana, which have proven this fact. But the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration is always, always, making efforts through innovation to improve upon its consular services generally, which includes passports and visas. So the Ghana High Commission invited you, the media here, so that you have, to, you have something from the Honorable Deputy Minister for Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration Honorable Kweku Amprechu Sapo, Member of Parliament for Mampo. He's coming to give you a brief. You know, as for London, I tell the President that if we are talking about regions, the UK should be the 17th region. Because sometimes information about Ghana is heard in the UK, even before I hear it. So the UK is very critical. So in terms of dealing with Ghanaians resident outside the country, the UK is the first point of call. 
So if the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is introducing any new thing relating to passport and visas, it stands to reason that the UK should be the first, the pilot. Hence, the presence of the Honorable Deputy Minister for Foreign Affairs, Honorable Kweku Amprachu Sapon, and is here with the Director of the Legal Bureau at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, Mr. Makarios Akabo. Yes. So, we believe that we are doing our best for our citizens. And as High Commissioner, I will apologize for any mishaps, challenges that Ghanaians have faced or our clients have faced in accessing passport and visa services in the last month. Forgive us, but we went through some few challenges because we wanted to put in place a system that will be significant, will be a significant improvement on the way we deliver our services. And fortunately, we also have in our midst, you see some gentlemen in white caps and uh, T-shirts, you know. We are hosting, we are hosting African Games next year. In Ghana, August 2023, and the local organizing committee is here. I'm sure after this media briefing from the mission, they will interact with media persons because we believe that the seventh, the, the seventeenth region should take the lead in letting the world know that whatever challenges the world is facing, whatever challenges Ghana is facing, the African Games will happen in Accra, the first time in the history of our country. So it is now my pleasure to invite Honorable Kweku Amprachum Sapon, Member of Parliament, for Mampo and Deputy Minister Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, Ghana, to address us. Honorable Minister. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, now that I see you in dressing, I know you are him. Yes. Uh, His Excellency. The High Commissioner, Her Excellency, the Deputy High Commissioner, um, officers of the mission, uh, our visitors from Ghana, the local organizing committee for the All African Games. Uh, I know your presence here, you are coming to pick some take a bit to be able to give a good account of Ghana for the games. Uh, our friends from the media. Um, I've been introduced by the Honorable His Excellency, the High Commissioner. Um, I'm here today to engage you on uh, some consular activities that uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration is introducing. And to take feedback from you and also how best maybe we can ship what we plan to introduce. It's never too late. Um, as the as H.G. said, um, there have been times when we have introduced certain projects or certain activities that we have failed to engage our compatriots 
for Ghanaians properly. And it has come to hunt us. Moving forward, we've learned our lesson. And uh, we've decided to make sure that whatever innovative or creative project or activity that we want to do, we still want to engage and make sure that we sensitize our compatriots so that we can carry them along. As I again mentioned, the mission's number one headache has always been to do passports and visas. Other consular matters are there, but the principal ones always happen to be passports and visa applications and acquisition. And um, if we are bashed, we are bashed from that angle. I know that the greater majority of the officers at the mission are doing an excellent job. Excellent job. But unfortunately, we don't tend to praise them. One small thing, one small mistake, the whole world gets to hear of it. Bashing left, right, and center. Unfortunately, some of the bashing sometimes when you go into it, there are no truth in it. Of late, there are all kinds of complaints and bashing of passport acquisition, visa acquisitions throughout, not even in London alone. It's happening in Dubai, it's happening in Rome, it's happening in France. And I can also tell you that in almost all these cases, when we have gone to investigate, it's either it is not true or we hit a brick wall. I'm not saying that uh, uh, everybody working at the mission is a saint or an angel. But the truth of the matter is, all those cases that have come out recently, we have followed up. And whenever we followed up, we hit a brick wall. Either the people making allegations disappear all of a sudden. Or when we manage to get them, they are not ready to talk. Now, you are making a complaint on social media. We try to reach you, we try to resolve the issue. Now, when we get to you, you are making allegations. We want to find the truth or otherwise. You are not ready to talk. You chase, you hit a brick or the person does not exist. Or the person disappears all of a sudden. How do we resolve it? It has gotten to a stage where some of us are beginning to wonder that maybe there might be politics in it. And I will not be surprised because our politics in Ghana have become so toxic, so polarized, that everything in Ghana, there is a political anger. People will throw in politics. And I remember what uh, my senior Sir John said to, said to me before he departed. He says to me, Kwaku, he says, politics, no? I will be here to the sense that when we are going to have a bedroom, no politics, yes, sir, I don't even go see him. So, it may be possible, I'm not saying that is the case, it may be possible that those people making these social media cases where when we followed up, we hit a brick wall. It's possible that maybe it's been orchestrated by the opposition to try and paint the government in a bad light. We've tried. Almost everyone that we see, we investigate. It comes to Accra, London here, they do their own investigations as well. They follow up. They hit a brick wall. We in Ghana, when we guess it, the minister will direct. And we also do our own investigation through other angles. We hit a brick wall. We can't get through. Most recent one, we came in Dubai. A lady had one. And then there also there were two gentlemen who also did some on the social media. Talking of passport being issued to Nigerians. 
And the Nigerians have used it into all kinds of activities and they've been arrested. And when they find out that they are not Ghanaians, but they are holding Ghanaian passport. We follow those two cases up. And the Dubai police says that they have not arrested any Ghanaian or any Nigerian holding the passports that they are talking about. That is on the social media and all over the place. So uh, I'm tempted by what uh, somebody, a person who says to me that there might be politics involved. But regardless of what is happening in social media and the rest, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is determined to improve the service that we provide on consular matters, on passports, on visas. The acquisition of uh, passports, there are a lot of noise. We do accept that there are some challenges in there. Recently, there was an IT problem, and uh, it affected the delivery of passports in Washington. There were a whole lot of noise. But the problem actually was not to do with the staff but rather was to do a glitch in the IT system. The moment it got resolved, everything started flowing. Ministry has looked at it and trying to find some innovative ways to improve the delivery of service. We tried a pilot scheme in Ghana for the application of passports. As a result, we contracted a private company called VFS. Maybe if you've been to Ghana, you might have heard of VFS. If you want to apply for a British visa, you, go, you don't go to the British Embassy. You submit it through this private company called VFS, and they will do the processing. It's a company that provides what we call the front-end premium service. We use them for the past four years, and it looks like the services that they were providing have been well received and it's excellent. So far, we haven't had any complaints from those who have gone to use their service. It is an optional service. It is not compulsory that you go there. So in Ghana, if you want to apply for passport, instead of going directly to the passport office, you can select the premium center, which is the VFS center. You go there, and then they will process your, the front end processing of your application for you. Have you seen the success of what VFS have done? And also taking into account the challenges and the complaints that we do receive from our compatriots in the UK and outside Ghana. The government decided to uh, employ the services of a private company to open a premium service center in the UK. The company is called Access Citizens Ghana Limited. It is 100% owned or 100% Ghanaian owned, Ghanaian registered company. I need to stress it because quite not too long ago, there was another social media that uh, the Ghana High Commission here has given some business to some, an Indian company where you are directed to go and fill forms and the rest. Meanwhile, it turned out not to be true. But there was a lady who was forcefully and convincingly on social media putting out that kind of message. Now, this company I'm mentioning is a 100% owned Ghanaian company. It's a company that is registered in Ghana. And we are asking them to provide that kind of service that VFS is provided in Ghana. Their offices it's at the central London Fenchurch Street near the Tower Hill uh, tube station. The premium centre, you go there, and when you fill your application online, 
You can decide to select Highgate to process it, or you can decide to select the premium center, which will be the one I'm talking about. When you go there, they will, well, obviously the ambience and the atmosphere that you are going in is first class. Very welcome, very excellent. You can get your tea or coffee. You can get your biscuits. Uh, you can get your cocoa. And uh, you go there, and within five minutes, you are attended to no queue or no long queues. Let me put it that way. Uh, as for queues, they will obviously be there. Because if there are uh, 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 20 people in there, they will, you have to go through uh, first come, first serve. But then they have. All the things that you need if you want to do your application there, you can walk in there and do your application there and then. Once you've done it, obviously you do your payment online to Ghana government. For passport, it's 100 pounds. Now, if you want to use the premium center, you want to go to them, they will charge you 45 pounds. Extra. So, on top of the hundred pounds that you are paying for your passport, for using the services of the premium center, you will pay an extra forty-five pounds. Now, that extra forty-five pounds, a certain percentage comes to the Ghana mission. So they will help you with everything. You need assistance in completing your application. They will help you to do it. And then they will also make a booking for you to do your biometrics. And they themselves will also do the biometrics there. So it's a one-stop shop. All the services that you need to start the processing of your uh, a passport application or visa application can be done there. Once they finish with what we call the front end service, the application they send it to the the back end, which is the Ghana Mission Highgate, and that is the vetting of your application and then the issuance of your passport. Within the timeline that has been set by Ghana Mission. Normal is 21 days. Oh. 10 to 15. What is on the, on the portal? 10 to 15. 15 days for passport, right. Working days. 15 working days, okay. So when you've gone there and done your front-end services and taking your biometrics, normally, uh, I think the delays tends to be the, the taking of the biometrics. That is, when you go there, you have to select a date when you go to Highgate, normal, the normal one. It is the date where sometimes you go there and there are no availability because others have uh, gone ahead of you and taking the date. Now with this uh, uh, premium center, if they are to give you an appointment, you get the appointment and you get the time. But you will not have to wait that much because they are able, because they themselves are the ones who will be taking the biometrics, they are able to get you a relatively good time to be able to take your biometrics. And then after that, the whole process then goes to the high gates, and then high gate will then uh, uh, be doing with the issuance of the passport. And we believe that with the introduction of this service and the taking the biometrics, the processing will be quickened, and the issuance of the passport will be done within the 15 working days. Um, they will not, access will not determine whether you will get the passport or you will not get the passport. That is not a decision for them. That is a decision for the, our Highgate office. 
but they will use every experience to help you to try to get the forms completed. Even if you have made mistakes, they will help you to correct it. Uh, if you need photocopying, they will help you to do photocopying. And then they will progress chase your application. They will send you and give you updates, SMS, telephone calls, emails, to let you know how your application is progressing. And then when it is ready, and you have asked for it, they can deliver it to you by courier. That is the kind of service this access uh, company or the premium center will be providing to uh, Ghanaians and other persons who go there for their services. And for that service that you are going for, you will pay 45 pounds. That place, it is not compulsory that you go there. I need to emphasize this. Otherwise, before I can say, Jack, the message will be all over Dalston, Liverpool Street, <laughs> Kilburn, and all the other places. That, hey, nowadays they say they are going to charge us some 45 pounds to finance their 2024 campaign. Right? Yes. That is the nature of our politics. The four, the, that center, again, I'm emphasizing, is optional. It's not compulsory for you to go there. If you want, go to Highgate. Now, once this center comes in, we know that the pressure on Highgate will be eased. And our officers will have time to attend to other responsibilities. And I guess it will make them more efficient and timely in delivering service to, to Ghanaians. They will also, at the premium uh, center, be processing visa applications. So same format. If you go there for that service, 45 pounds. And again, they will help you to go through all the necessary processes that you need to go through. Having touched on visas, I also need to mention or inform you that um, hopefully, maybe by the beginning of next month, we will start a new visa system. And that is called machine readable visa stickers. Currently, the visas that we issue. Some people call it Mankani visa because it is handwritten, right? Those visas don't correspond with any system back home in Ghana. So when that visa is given to you, the immigration officer in Ghana doesn't know that visa has been given to you. And our reports also is not able to read or see that uh, Kojo Menu has been given a visa in London. It has opened doors for all kinds of fraudulent visas to surface to the extent that we believe that the thousands of Chinese who have been to Ghana to do the galamte is simply because the majority of the Chinese people have come in with the Mankani visa. Uh, you take a country of China with 1.4 billion people. And then until recently, the only center where we were issuing visas was the Beijing office. Now, if you look at the map of uh, China, and you see where Beijing is, my, meanwhile, the majority of the people who are coming to Ghana, the Chinese coming to Ghana, are not anywhere near Beijing. They come from two thousands of miles away. So how did they get the visa to come to Ghana? You tell me. And you and I know how good the Chinese are in innovating and uh, doing all kinds of uh, copycat uh, stuff. So it is known, it has been found out that 70% of the Chinese who have come to Ghana have come with the Mekani visa. And all they have to do is with that kind of visa, they get to Ghana, they are to just put $100 in your passport and you are good to go. 
It is happening not only there, but we believe it's also happening in other countries. So we have to find a way to make sure that Ghana, we have come to the ICAO uh, 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 level. That's uh, International Civil Aviation Authorities level. So we are introducing the machine readable visa system. We have a company that we have been designing for us. It is a Swiss company called Orafusli or OFS. It's a company that was established in the 15th century and has lived all these years. That company is the one that prints the Swiss currency. It is a state security company. So we've gone in for the best to make sure that the visa system that we are introducing has got the latest security features to make sure that the copycats can't get in. So when that visa is issued instantly, there is a record of it in Accra. So somebody sitting in Accra can key into the system and know that Kofi Menu has been given a visa from London. He will be coming to Ghana. So the moment you get there, your passport is scanned and all your duties will show up. Currently, it doesn't happen. So we are having all kinds of people, pedophiles and whatever, you name them. They are all getting it and then they are going. Now when you get there and then we give you that uh, machine readable visa, we will have all the information about you before you get to town. If it happens that we have to stop you before you get to town, we'll find a way, a nice way of doing it, so that uh, you don't get to town and come and cause us problems. The company has already been to Ghana, and they have, we are far advanced. They have installed the hardware machines that is needed in Ghana, at uh, Ghana Immigration at Kotoka Airport. They are supposed to be in town in London today. They are already here, right. They are here to install the London uh, 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 machines. We have selected five machines initially. The five machines by way of volume of visa issuance constitute 70%. London, Berlin, Washington, New York, and uh, the fifth one I keep forgetting. Pretoria, right. Five. Five point two seventy percent. So we are doing the first five. London is number one because it's the 17th uh, uh, region. Eh? You see, it's already recognized. <laughs> so London, they are here to install it. And then they will train officers. Once London is done, they will be moving on to Berlin. Already, they have done the trial run in Copenhagen and Bern, and everything is fine. The company, like I said, is a Swiss company. And then, from Berlin, they will move on to Washington. The timeline is that in the month of August, they are doing London and they are do doing Berlin. But we are coming to some arrangement with them that once London is done, we will want to roll it out. So business from here will start issuing it here, whilst the others follow suit. That's the 17th region, always giving you special uh, attention. It, it's, no, it's, no, uh, 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 it's no wonder that I was once a chairman of the party here. Yeah? Yeah. So we laid the groundwork. Um, so that is that for the, uh, the e visa. Right, or the machine readable uh, business. Now, once I have touched on this particular one, I think the other thing that I need to move on, because they are all travel matters, passport, visa, what next? Ghana card. Um, <laughs> Ghana, Ghana card. Um, I know the experience have been asking about Ghana card, Ghana card, Ghana card. Ghana card is coming. Next month, hopefully, they will be here to start the Ghana card. Um, 
already the consular officers have been designated and to be trained to become the registration officers. The training will be happening very, very soon. And it is hoped that the training will happen before the 12th of September. Because the 12th of September is when uh, the NIA has in their calendar to get it to start the registration, physical registration itself. And uh, it is for Ghanaians res resident outside Ghana, foreign nationals, oh, sorry, this will pertain to, dual nationals will also qualify. Um, the unfortunate thing is the mission will be losing money. Eh? Nowadays, they won't come and pay for visa. You take a Ghana card, take your British passport, and then Bob is your uncle. It's gone. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So to get a Ghana card, you need your birth certificate, your baptismal certificate, and then if you are not able to produce it, a relative can uh, come and vouch for you. If that is also not possible, you have to make an affidavit. And the affidavit the High Commissioner is designated as a Commissioner of Oath. So you go before the High Commissioner and then, and then pledge that uh, you are a true blue Ghanaian. Um, so that is that for the, the Ghana card. <coughs> now, <coughs> I know that some Ghanaians or some of our compatriots went home and they applied for the Ghana card, but they could not get their card before they left. My understanding is your details are in the system. At that time, there was a shortage of the card itself. Your details are in the system. And um, the last night, the executive secretary to the NIA, Professor Atifa, told me to tell you I know HE protested against it when we, when we met the Bantama people. But the NIA boss is saying that if there are some of our compatriots who applied and could not get it before uh, they left, if uh, we can get to a point where we can collate the names, I'm sure with the permission of the High Commissioner, uh, the consular session probably, but uh, I will defer to you. You are the boss here, so you decide what happens in your territory. If they collect the names, they will get their cars for them. If not, when they come here to start the process, their details can be retrieved from the system and the cars can be printed here for them. So if anybody falls in that category, they shouldn't worry. They just have to wait for the registration to start here, and then they can key in the receipt that they have, they key it in, they'll be able to get. They will need to do a second registration. So that is that for the NI. Uh, I don't intend to talk on any other matters, especially IMF matters. Don't take me there, don't ask me any question about IMF. But ask me a question about uh, my passport and my visa matters. Because I represent the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration. Uh, IMF, I know very soon, Kenofuriata will be in town. Then you can ask him about IMF. That's it, that is it. So I thank you very much and then uh, I'll wait for you. I'll, I'll, I'll do my possible best to try and answer.